Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brian Kafke, and we're continuing the series Master Databricks and Apache Spark. This is lesson 31, PySpark, and we're tweaking or adding a feature to what we covered in lesson 30, which was reading from a SQL database. This time we'll be talking about how to do the same thing, but doing it in parallel to leverage the parallelism of Spark clusters. This is based on a comment somebody made in the last video, and I thought that's a great idea to add that as a video. So let's jump in. I want to ask you to join my mission to train people around the world and take them from Padawan to Jedi Master. To do this, I need you to join my inner circle on Patreon by following the link in the description. With your support, I'll be able to do a lot more, not only for you, but for the community at large. Going right into the code again. This is the notebook. I do want to show something here. There's a link I borrowed very heavily from this blog by Maria Carinaso, hope I saw Carinaso. Really good blog, very simple to the point. She gives you good examples and it talks in Python. A lot of the information I could find was really around Scala. So this was extremely useful. So I'm borrowing heavily from this, but tweaking it to my own requirements here. I put this link in the description to her blog so you can go look at that. Kudos to Maria for writing that. So as always, I need to say there's no warranties expressed in my code. It is as is. So we'll be talking about accessing an Azure SQL database using Python, but this time we'll be talking about doing that using parallelism. So we'll be getting a lot better performance and spreading the data out into multiple nodes. As we know, Spark partitions data and then gives a partition to each node, and then the executors run to work on the data. So it makes sense that if we're going to retrieve data from a database, we'd like to be able to take it and have it also partitioned and spread out on the nodes. In my last video, I showed you the simplest way to query a relational database like Azure SQL using JDBC, but I did not tell you how to do it using parallelism and getting the data back in partitions. So let's see how we can do that now. As before, we're just going to set up our connection properties here. So we're creating a bunch of Python variables. You can see we're using Python. I'm going to run that. Then we need to build our connection pieces. So we need to get our JDBC URL, and this is going to connect us to the database. And then we have our connection properties here. Now notice you have to know things like this. I showed you in the last video. You can go back to the overview page of your SQL database on Azure and that can give you the information of what the host name is, which is the SQL server name, basically the Azure SQL server name. You need to know, of course, your user ID and password and the name of your database. And this will get us not only our URL, but our connection properties. To proceed with getting the data back in partitions, we're going to have to give Spark a little bit of information. We're going to have to tell it how many partitions we want. In other words, how many groups of data do we want this to be split into? We're going to have to tell it what column we want to be splitting on. So usually that's some sort of ID or identity column. We're going to want a lower bound, meaning we're going to tell Spark what's the lowest number in this column you want us to retrieve or include. And then the upper bound, what's the highest number that should be included? And be careful because that number is not inclusive, it's exclusive. In other words, if I say the upper bound is 1,000, I will get up to 999 if it's an integer and not the 1,000. So we have to make sure we go one above that at least. Let's take a look at our query. It's going to get the minimum, you can see here, minimum and maximum customer IDs that we're going to use for our boundaries for our partitioning key. So you can see we're creating a doc string. And in the doc string, we're passing in our query to get our values. Pretty straightforward, just selecting the min and max and changing the names of the columns coming back to min ID and max ID. We're going to be able to run that by calling spark.read.jdbc and as before passing in a URL but instead of a table name we're going to pass a query in and the rest is pretty much what we've seen already. However one difference is we're appending the collect method which is going to tell Spark to immediately execute this and return the results. Then we're specifying that we want the first iteration which is index 0 to be returned only. By doing that, we're going to get just what we need in this bounds variable. Then we'll display bounds and see what it looks like. And what we can see is we have a row that came back, a min ID of 1, a max ID of 30118, and we have the values we need to pass to our Spark query to partition our data. So let's do that now. Here we'll be returning a Spark data frame, SPDF underscore sales. We'll be calling spark.read.jdbc as we just did before. 
Only in this case, we're going to be passing back our table name. We just want the whole table to come back. We're giving it our properties as usual, which includes our credentials. And here's the block that's telling it how we want this partitioned. Num partitions is telling Spark how many partitions we want. And we're asking for six. Which column is specified by the column parameter? And we're partitioning on the customer ID. Lower bound is being set by our bounds variable. And we're pulling in the min ID. Upper bound is being set by bounds.max ID. Again, what we just got back in our query. We need to add a one to this because this is an exclusive parameter value, meaning it will not include the value you give it in the result set. So we add one to it so that we get all of the rows we need back. Looks good. Let's confirm that we got the right number of partitions here. We specify our data frame name dot RDD dot get num partitions. We can see we got six back, which is exactly what we wanted. So great. Now let's walk through an example where instead of just getting the entire table back, we'll run a query on the back end and partition the result set. Here we're going to be passing this query through. Nothing very complicated, just joining two tables and returning a few rows back. Pretty simple. We're going to be storing that query in push down query. We're going to run it by saying spark.readjdbc. And this is as before, the URL and the table. But notice again, Instead of the table, we're going to be putting a query there. And that's going to be the query from above, push down query. We've got our properties. And we're asking for four partitions. The column is going to be still customer ID. And we're setting our lower bound to min ID and our upper bounds to max ID plus one. Looks good. We can confirm that we got the right number of partitions by checking our data frame. And we can see we have four partitions. So wrapping up, pretty quick video, but the important takeaway is that we did what we did in video 30. We queried a relational database, in this case, Azure SQL database, but we did it using parallelism, which gives us multiple partitions back that we can spread over our nodes, which is extremely important to get maximum performance. I want to thank you. Please share, subscribe, and like. Tell your friends about my channel. and. Check out the links in the description, chances to support me on Patreon, as well as my social media. Until next time, remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together.